Welcome. Welcome to Chemistry 111. This is the last test, test four, before the final. This is a quick review of how to get all the correct answers on test four. So, starting with number one. Number one, we have 32.5 grams of potassium chlorate. And we're asked how many grams of potassium chloride could be found. There, we'll need to convert grams to moles to moles to grams. To do this, start with our 32.5 grams of KClO3. We need the molar mass. Potassium is 39. Chlorine is 35.45. Oxygen is 16. There are three oxygens. So the molar mass is 122.45 grams per one mole of KClO3. There are two moles of KClO3 per two moles of KCl from the balanced chemical equation, which will simplify to one to one. And the molar mass of KCl would then be 39 plus 35.45, or in one mole of KCl, we would have 74.45 grams. Grams, grams, moles, 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 we're left with grams of KCl. So, 2.5 divided by 122.45 times 74.45 gives you 19.8 grams. The correct answer is A. Moving right along. Two, when sodium is thrown into water, it creates an explosion. What would be the enthalpy of that reaction be? So I have to write down my energies. So we have two Na, we have two H2O liquid, goes to two one H2, and two NaOH aqueous. So that's two Na pluses and two OH minuses. So right down, that's zero, that's 285.8. There's zero, there's negative 240.1 times two, and negative 230 times two. So looking at that, product delta H is equal to H of products minus H of reactants. So products 240.1 times two and negative 230 times two. So products would be negative 940 minus our negative 285.8 times two, negative 571.6. Negative 940 plus 571.6 is negative 368.4. Or D. Answer D. Uh, three, a friend stores a uh, 1400 gram block of dry ice into a Ziploc bag at negative 18 degree freezer at one atmosphere. Unfortunately, dry ice melts at negative 78. So CO2 melts at negative 78. What would the volume of the bag be now that the block has turned into CO2 gas? 
So the bag would expand until the pressure volume is where. So this one's just a PV equals NRT. With that in mind, we need to find V. V equals NRT over P. However, we are not given N directly. We are given a mass, but we can find N by looking up the molar mass of CO2, which is 44. So 1,400 grams divided by 44 grams in one mole means our moles are 31.2. Two moles. Our temperature, negative 18, needs to be converted into Kelvin. Negative 18, 18 plus 273 is going to be 255 Kelvin. R is going to be our ideal gas constant. So at this point, you're going to have 31.82 times 0 0.08206 times 255 all over 1. 6 times 31. The volume is going to be crazy big, 665.8 liters. You, yeah, that block. So if the bag hasn't already popped, it is filled to the brim. It may not even be able to fully expand because if that freezer isn't 665 liters, it's going to expand until it can't expand no more. So the correct answer is answer C. C is how big this would expand. The last one on the first page. Space explorers testing the atmosphere of a new, hopefully inhabitable, planet and capture some gas in his testing chamber. Balmy, 37 degrees. Uh, registers a density of 2.48 grams per liter against an external pressure of one bar. What is the gas's molar mass? So our equation is density equals pressure times molar mass over RT. Rearranging that, we can say density times RT over pressure equals molar mass. So 2.48 times R, 0 0.08314 divided by 1 times we need our temperature to be in Kelvin. 273 plus 37 is 310. 10K. Calculate this out. Would have a molar mass of close to 63.9 grams per mole. Looking back at that, that would be answer B. Answer B. Okay. A 20 mil sample of an unknown acid is titrated with 0.18 molar base. If it takes 37 mils of base to neutralize the acid, what is the molarity of the acid? So we have this is a MAVA equals MBVB. We're given 20 mils acid, we're given. 
0.18 molar base. And I'm told that 37 mils of base. So we're solving for our acid. Uh, to do this, you would say 8.18 times 37 divided by 20. You do that, your MA should be 0 0.333, which happens to coincide with answer A, or close enough to answer A. Another similar one. An 83 gram sample of sodium bicarbonate is dissolved in 250 mils. So what is the resulting molarity? 83 grams of NaHCO3, 250 mils. So this one is returned grams to moles to molarity. Grams to moles to molarity. So I'll start with 83 grams. What is the molar mass? Sodium is 23. Hydrogen is 1. Carbon is 12. Oxygen is 16. There's three oxygens, so the molar mass is 84 grams per one mole. Then we have to divide by liters. So we have 0 0.250 liters, a quarter of a liter. You do that, and you would have 3.95 molar. 3.595 molar, or answer C. Answer C. Okay, what is the combustion? Enthalpy of combustion of ethanol as a fuel source. Simply put, we have to products calculate products minus reactants. CH2OH plus 3O2 and goes to 2CO2 and 3H2O. So NaO 285.8 times 3, we have negative 393.5 times 2, 0 times 3, and negative 277.6. So products minus reactants again. Products minus reactants again. Two eighty five point eight. So the products, 285.8 times 3, and 393.5 times 2 is negative 1644.4 minus the negative 277.6 is the same as adding 277.6, so negative 1366.8. 366.8, which happens to be close enough to A, 1367. Now, the next one, I do not need to go to the dot cam to do this. Which of the following molecules would have the lowest enthalpy of formation? H2 gas, sodium solid, xenon gas, or nitrogen gas? All of these are pure elements in their standard state. The rule is pure elements in their standard state always have an enthalpy of formation of zero. So they would all be zero. So the answer is E. All of these all are the same. It's a trick question, but not really that trick of a question. Okay, this one, I kind of fudged a bit to make it work, but electric heater pulls 600 watts of energy. If it shows exothermic release of about 598 joules of heat for the same period of time, what is the internal energy change of this heater? I only fudged because it should produce close to 600 watts of heat because most electric heat 
electric energy con to heat conversion is almost a hundred percent. But so we have six. The, the reaction is E equals Q plus W. Well, if the work it is absorbing 600 watts or essentially joules of work, and it's releasing 598 joules of heat. Hopefully it's not too hard. 600 minus 598 is going to be positive two, positive two. It has a net absorption of two joules of heat. The next one, a marshmallow contains about 9.7 milliliters of air at one atmosphere. So V1, P1. If I pull a vacuum and achieve one tor, what would the volume be? Mm, so V2. So this is a P1, V1 equals P2, V2. The only trick is you have to convert pressure to similar units. You cannot use tor and atmosphere. So there is 760 tor in an atmosphere. So I'm going to say 9.71 times 760 equals 1 times V2. 9.7, 9.71 times 760 divided by 1 is 7379.6 milliliters because the volume was milliliters. Dividing this by 1,000, you would have 7.38 liters. 7.38 liters. Wait, did I do it wrong? Nine point, so since it left all the milliliters, it'd be 7,380 milliliters. So answer D, answer D. Okay. Question 11, how much ammonia could be formed from 50 grams of hydrogen and 25 grams of nitrogen. This is a limiting reactant case where the reaction N2 plus 3H2 goes to 2NH3. You could probably figure out, just thinking about how much the limiting reactant is, pretty obviously. But we'll go ahead and do it both ways. So you're going to turn grams to moles to moles to grams. 50 grams of hydrogen. There is two grams in one mole. But there is three moles of hydrogen per two moles of ammonia. And in one mole of ammonia weighs 17 grams. Nitrogen, there's 28 grams of nitrogen per one mole. While there may be only one mole of nitrogen per two moles of ammonia, I think we can guess which one is going to have the lesser number. So 50 divided by 2 divided by 3 times 2 times 17. It's going to be, we could, if all the hydrogen were to react, we could get 283.3 grams. If all the nitrogen were to react, 2 times 17 we would only be able to get 30 grams. 30.4 grams. 
So in this particular case, yeah, it's A. It's A. Now, next one. Uh, 325 gram oh, solid iron bar. 320. Has a heat capacity of four of 0.449 joules, and it's heated to 1300, and it's allowed to cool to. We want to cool it to 50. What mass of 20 degree, 25 degree water? is needed tf is the water is also going to achieve 50 by the way 4.184 so the idea here is q equals m cat and q of one situation equals q of the other so so what we have is q of iron is going to equal negative q of water so the q of iron is 325 times 0.449 times 50 minus 1300. Five point four four nine times 50 minus 1300. So you would get a big number, negative 182406. So that's for the Q of iron. So that'd be positive 18 to 406 equaling, equaling mass times 4.184 times 25. So I'm gonna divide both sides by 25, divide by 4.184 and would get how much water would we need? The mass would have to be something like 1744 grams. So like a liter, almost two liters. Seventeen forty-four. answer C. Okay, got this. Tert, uh, to, in order to detect leaks in methane, tert butyl thiol C4H10S is added as an odorant. How much faster would ethane, methane fuse? So rate of methane over rate of, we'll just say the TBS is equal to the square root of the molar mass of TBS over the molar mass of methane. Well, the molar mass of methane is 12 plus four, so 16. The other guy was what, C4H10S? 12 times 4 plus 10 plus S, which is 32, is 90. 90 divided by 16 is 5.625. However, we have to make sure to square root it. So correct answer should be 2.37. 2.37, you've got to make sure to square root it after the fact, which is letter A. Continuing on, how much sodium hydroxide must be dissolved to make a 0.325 molar solution with 500 mils? So this one is just a rearrangement of like the one of the earlier questions is like we're going from molarity to moles to grams. We have a volume of 500, uh, it's uh, mils, and we have a molarity of 0 0.0325. Well, sorry, not 0 
and AOH. So M times V would give us moles. So 0.325 times 0.5 liters would give us, we have 0.1625 moles. And we need to be able to calculate the, the mass. Well, sodium hydroxide and one mole of NaOH, we have sodium, which is 23, and we have oxygen, which is 16, and hydrogen, which is one. So it's at 40 grams per mole. 40 times 0.1625 would need 6.5 grams. 6.5 grams, which is answer C. Let's see. What is the enthalpy of formation of methane? This one, this one is a, uh, has this law. Simply, what do we have to do to rearrange our equations uh, to match the ones we have? So what you should see here, C, C. This carbon and this carbon match. So we're going to use equation one as written, negative 393.5. We have equation two, I have two H2 and I have one H2. So I'm going to use equation two doubly. I have 285.8 times two. And we have the final thing, methane. Methane is here, but methane is there. So we have to flip this guy around. Flipping this guy around means we have positive 891. So looking at the, the numbers, I'm going to sum up equation one. Equation two twice, and the reverse of equation three. And that would give us negative 74.1. So, correct answer is B. Now, 16 is a little bit of a challenge problem. We say 55 mils of N2O is captured by water displacement at 35 degrees. So V is 55, T is 35 degrees, and under an atmospheric pressure, so of 755. However, the uh, vapor pressure of water is 41.5. Two tor. P water is 41.2. So I ask you, how many moles of N2O were captured? This one is, we have to use Dalton's law. So the P of N2O is going to be 755 minus 41.2. 755 minus 41.2 is 713.8 tor. We have to turn that into atmospheres. So we're going to say PV over RT equals N. So pressure 713.8 divided by 760 is 0.939 atmospheres. Turn our milliliters into liters, 0 0.055 liters. Our R is going to be 0 0.08206. And our T, we're turning our Celsius into Kelvin, 
308. So 0 0.939 times 0 0.055 divided by R divided by a 308. And you would get 0 0.00204 as the correct answer. So not C, but D, because you have to take into account the pressure of water. Water's adding into that. Okay. Almost done. Last four. Finish strong. What mass of magnesium is needed to react with this mass of iron oxide? So we're turning 125 grams of Fe2O3 into Mg. So uh, the only part of this equation I actually need is that it's 3 Mg for 1 Fe2O3. So we need to find what is the molar mass of Fe2O3. Fe is about 56. So times 2. Oxygen is 16 times 3. We say there's 160 grams of Fe2O3 and 1 mole. For every 1 mole of iron, we need 3 moles of magnesium. And the molar mass of magnesium is 24 grams, or close enough to 24 grams. So 125 divided by 160 times three, times, sorry, times three times 24, gonna be 56 and a quarter grams. Close enough to 57. I rounded a bit, so. 18. Which of the following statements does not apply to ideal gases? An ideal gas is considered to have no volume. An ideal gas's rate of motion is proportional to its absolute temperature. An ideal gas is considered to have no intermolecular attractions with other gases. And an ideal gas will condense below a certain temperature. So the correct answer is D. But why is that? For it to be an ideal gas, we're assuming the first three statements that essentially an ideal gas is like a point charge. The, the total volume the gas contains is so small, we can round it down to zero. So the gas fills a container, but it doesn't occupy any of that volume. I know it's kind of weird, but that's what it means to be an ideal gas. C is the other major statement of ideal gas that it doesn't interact. They are all inelastic collisions. They bounce off each other. There's no attraction. Basically, A and C are taken care of when we use the van der Waals equation of state. And B is just simply that our, the motion is proportional to the temperature. That's pretty straightforward. But that's also part of what's thinking of in the kinetic molecular theory. Number 19 and number 20. The cobalt or, or scuterite can be processed in the following way. Cobalt arsenic, cobalt AS3, it can, plus nine oxygens goes to cobalt and 585 and arse, arsenic oxide. If 585 grams of scuterudite is processed to form 102 grams of cobalt, what is your percent yield? So we have 585 grams of cobalt arsenic. Three. Now, cobalt has a molar mass of about 59. Arsenic has a molar mass of about 75. So the molar mass of cobalt arsenic, arsenide, is... 284 grams per one mole. So we set this up. We set this up as as, as follows: 585 divided 284. 
can say times four over four times 59. So, you four times 59 would be, how much would you, you get? 121.5. To calculate percent yield, you'll take your actual 102 divided by your, your calculated 121, and you'd get 84% or close enough to, which is D. Finally, 12 grams of unknown iron ore absorbs 785 joules of heat to raise its temperature from 25 degrees to 131. What is the identity? So we're using the heat capacity. We're saying Q equals MC delta T, but we're solving for C. So Q divided by M and delta T will give us our C. So 785 divided by 12 divided by our change in temperature, which is 106. What to give us our heat capacity? 785 divided by 12 divided by 106 is 0.617. Looking back at the Word document, 0.617, that's closest to Fe304. So the correct answer is B. The correct answer is B. And that is how you get all the answers on this test. Thank you for watching.